Hi everyone, I'm back with another AP Statistics video, and today we're going to be talking about regression lines. So much fun, right? Yeah, lots of fun. Alright, why do we have regression analysis? Why do regression lines exist? Why do they exist? My bad. <clears throat> the objective of re regression analysis is to use the information about one variable, x, to draw some sort of a conclusion about the second variable, y. Basically, if we know two variables have a relationship, it would be really easy if we could predict the value of the dependent variable based on the value of the independent variable. If you could predict the value of the y variable based on the value of the x variable. And it, it would make predicting things a whole lot easier, right? If we can figure out a pattern between two variables in a data set, then we could potentially apply it to a wider range of wider range of data on the of those same two variables, right? Basically, it makes it it gives us the ability to predict what the value of a variable will be based on the value of one variable. Classic example, height and weight. Generally, taller people weigh more. Wouldn't it be for, I don't know if you're a epidemiologist or you're a pediatrician or someone, right? Wouldn't it be nice if you could predict your patient's or your subject's weight based on their height? Well, that's what a regression line essentially allows us to do. It will allow you to predict the value of well, it won't allow you to predict exactly, but it'll get you um, at least maybe close, depending on the strength of your data, the relationship, the relationship in your data. It will at least allow you to get a good guess of what someone's weight will be based on their height. So that's too long, didn't listen. We use regression lines to predict the value of one variable based on the value of another. We use, a value, we use it to predict the value of the y variable based on the x variable most often. Here we go. Scatter plots frequently exhibit a linear pattern. This makes sense, right? Scatter plots are usually showing bivariate quantitative data, or bivariate quantitative data sets, I should say. And that's perfect for regression analysis. When this is the case, it makes sense to summarize the relationship between the variables by finding a line that is as close as possible to the pl plots in the plot. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. This is done by calculating the line of best fit, or the least square regression line. Alright, this is the format for writing a regression line. Notice that this little caret or this arrow on top of the Y? Yeah, that's a hat. It is a hat. H-A-T. A hat. We even say it's Y hat. Some statistician somewhere had a really fun day putting a hat on the letter Y. And, you know, it goes to show that if you you can have some fun statistics. I mean, this guy put a... some guy, some guy, or some woman, I'm not sure put a hat on the letter Y and decided, you know, this is going to be my contribution to statistics. Moving on, this is the general form for not only a line, but specifically the least squares regression line, which is just a fancy word for regression line, all right? Well, a hat means a predicted Y, so what we think Y will be based on an X value. B is a slope. Now, this is also be referred to as B1. I'm just saying, it'll be B or B1. And this A can also be referred to as B0. And what is that A? That A is our Y-intercept. And But the intercept isn't really important, but I'll get to what it means a little later. What you should memorize is this phrase right here, right? How to interpret the slope of a regression line. Very important. It is the approximate amount by which the Y increases when X increases by one unit. Of course, if you've already had an algebra class and you know how, how to read the slope of a line, you may already know that, but... AP Statistics likes to ask this question, what does the slope of this regression line mean? So I would definitely know that definition and phrase. Alright, so let's look at visually what a regression line is doing, right? In a perfect world, all of our data points would just fall on this line right here. And we could predict with a perfect accuracy the pattern and where the data is going and Outside of this data set, you know, if it looks like it runs from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0 to 7, right? So we can, if, if all the data fell exactly on this line, we could, I guess, kind of maybe predict what the value, the y variable would be based, based on what the x variable would be, right? We could predict perfect accuracy. But unfortunately, we can't because our data points hardly ever just fall on a line like that. It's very difficult. So the best, best thing to do is to get this line as close as possible to all of the data points. It's not really important, you know, the whole sum of squares thing. That's not the takeaway from this lesson. What you should understand is that 
a regression line works by making sure by minimizing the distance between the line, which is our predicted val which shows our predicted value for y, and the actual data points. Once again, the deviations from the line are zero in the best case scenario. And we call it a least squares regression line because we square the deviations, we square the distance between the line and the data point and to get rid of the negative numbers. And when we minimize this, when we minimize the sum of squares, when we minimize essentially the distance between the data points and the lines, that's when we know we have the best possible regression line. So enough talking about regression lines, let's do an example problem, right? Researchers are studying pomegranate's antioxidant properties to see if it might be helpful in the treatment of cancer. In one study, mice were injected with cancer cells and randomly assigned to one of three groups. Plain water, water supplemented with 1.1% pomegranate fruit extract, and water supplemented with 0.2% pomegranate fruit extract. The average tumor volume for mice in each group was recorded for several points in time, where X is the number of days after being injected with cancer cells, and Y is the average tumor volume. So we're going to take the data from the control group. Sorry. We're going to take the data from the control group and create a regression line to see if we can predict the size, to help us predict the size of a tumor based on the number of days after, being, after a mice is being injected with cancer cells. Now, we won't be able to perfectly figure out what that value will be, but the regression line will help us, will get us close to what the actual value will be, and that's all we strive for regression lines, getting close. This is the formula for calculating the slope of regression line. It's nasty, but if you don't want to if you don't want to look at that, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. All right, so these are the written out steps for calculating the slope of the regression line. But if that's confusing, I'm just going to show you how to do it step by step using the formula. All right, so here's our original data set, right? And I want you to know the first thing I did was calculate the mean of our x coordinates and the mean of our y coordinates. This is very important. The first thing you do is calculate the mean of your x coordinates. Second thing, calculate the mean of your y coordinates. All right, and of course you know how to calculate mean. I hope at this point I just added up all the point, all your x values, divided by five, and I got the mean for your x values. The y values, added them all up, added all the y values by themselves up, and divided by five, I got the mean for your y values. That creates a point. And what's very important to know is that all regression that are sorry is that our regression line has to pass through the point which contains the mean of the x values and the mean of the y values. That will come in handy much later, but just remember that fact, right? There's our formula for the slope of the regression line. And here's this table with all this data. What does this mean? Let me show you how to use it. All right, so I have our x and y points lined up, right? 11, 15, 11, 150, that's one point. 15, 270, that's another point. Yada, yada, yada. I've lined them all up, right? First thing I did is I worked on this thing right here. The deviations of each x value in a point from the mean of the x values, or x coordinate values, right? So I remember the x mean of x was 19, so 11 minus 19, negative 8, 15 minus 19, negative 4, and I continued that for each x value, right? And then I did the, and then I squared them, because this is, remember, it's, it has to do with the whole sum of squares thing, but not only that, when we get rid of the negative sign, we, they don't add, the, call, your deviations don't add up to zero. So, just in case you didn't notice, this last row down here is all the sum of each, in, or the sums of each individual column. Keep that in mind. Alright, so the, after I figured out the, de, the deviations for the x values, I figured out the deviations for the y values. Took the mean of the y's and subtracted each y coordinate from the mean of the y's. So 150 minus 438, negative 288. 270 minus 438, negative 168. Then I did that for each y value. All right. And of course, you, you notice that at the bottom there is the sum of squares, right? We they want the sum of the deviations from the x mean squared. So I squared out my x means, each one, and then I summed them all together. That's going to be our denominator. All right, and then we also need the product of the deviations of the x from each the x deviations from the mean of it, the x coordinates, and the devi. Sorry, I should say we need the product of the x deviations and the y deviations. So that's what I did. I multiplied each x deviation by the each, its corresponding y deviation. So for 11 and 150, I multiplied its x deviation, which is 11 minus 19, negative 8 times the y deviation, which was 150 minus 438, I get 288, multiplied those together, 
and I got 2,304. I did that for each x deviation and corresponding y deviation. So I did that, and then I added these numbers together. Added each product together. I got 5,960. That is the numerator. That's this number right here. That is the numerator of this slope formula. The denominator is going to be this is the sum of this category right here, the square of the x deviation. And so we divide those numbers to, by each other and we get 37.25. This is the slope of your regression line. But you notice that the for, the form of the regression line has also an intercept, that egg, right? But luckily, if you know the slope and a point, you can figure out the intercept very easily just using some basic algebra. Remember, all regression lines have to pass through the coordinate which contains the mean of your x-coordinates and the mean of your y-coordinates. So, 438, which is our predict, it has to pass, the regression line has to pass through that value. It is a, it's the one true y-value that has to have. So, 438 is equal to a plus 37.25, which was our slope, times 19, because remember it has to pass through that x value. And then we do we just we just solve for a, and that is our intercept. So after all that work, we figure out that our regression line is equal to negative 269.75 plus 37.25x. Remember, this is the slope of the regression line right here, and this is our intercept. That was a lot of work, right? Luckily, you'll never have to, you'll very rarely ever have to calculate the slope of the regression line by hand. It is very important, however, that you know how to interpret it. Remember, how do we interpret it? Well, remember, the slope represents how much the y value changes for, every, for a one unit change in x. So for every one additional day after in injection, after, remember, this was a study about injection, injecting mice with cancer cells in the size of their tumors, right? So every one additional day after injection, the, the tumor that the mouse has grows by 37.25 millimeters. That's what the slope means. Now, does the now as far as interpreting the intercept, it means nothing. Can't, just think of it this way. What are you measuring? You're measuring the size of a tumor, right? Can you have a negative size of a tumor? No, a tumor cannot be negative sized. It cannot have a negative size. So the slope, the sorry, the intercept makes absolutely no sense. So you don't need to worry about it. You just need to know how to interpret the slope. Now, just in case that was you still want to know how to calculate it, I'm going to leave it here. Go ahead and take a screenshot or whatever you want. But this is it as far as regression lines go. And uh, if you have any questions or want to request or you want a clearer video or you want to know why I spent my time making this video, please let me know. Send us a comment or a message.